Solo Wargaming, the William Sylvester way. We're using William Sylvester's Field Guide for Wargaming Without an Opponent to conduct a human orcish campaign, map-based campaign. The boys at Broholm are trying to smash their way into Watchtower Hill so they can recover the belt of Vince McMaximus. Unfortunately, that lies in the southern portion of the great Latora Khan's domain, and this is where, as we open the action today, the great Latora Khan's army, this is a fairly substantial army, is waiting to see which way he needs to go, and that's one of the things we want to figure out today. We're going to try to advance the clock to July 15th. That's only a week. We have two battles we need to cover. One is the Battle of Renninger Marsh over here. That is on the western side of the map. That was a battle between the human army of the west uh, versus, who is the other one? The Cleavers, led by warlord Grochnard. The army of the west general was General Martin Dart. Over here in the east, we had the second battle of Baron Elizabeth Farm. Hopefully you can see that down here which is right in the center of the Whiteheart Wood, a borderlands between the two. Nobody goes through the Dark Briar these days. The elves have been all stirred up, and it's dangerous. Both of those battles went poorly for the Bromans. Let's find out how poorly. As you can see down here, Blagton, three houses means it's a fairly substantial-sized city. Let's just see how bad it went for them. First, we'll go with Renninger Marsh. Now, to refresh your memory, Renninger Marsh... The Bromans were outnumbered. They wound up, uh, th this, the orcs left this heavy foot kind of up north a little bit too long and allowed these guys to do some pretty heavy damage to their opponents. The key thing to look at here is that what we can do. So the first thing to be aware of is the Army of the West left the field. And when you leave the field, you leave your dead and wounded behind, which means that as of the end of this battle, Going in with 100 light foot, the Army of the West has nothing. They've all been killed or captured. They went into the battle with 2,000 heavy foot. They came out with just 375. Normally, I would split. If you win the battle, and you'll see that over here for the orcs, we split the difference. Those that die during the course of the tabletop game, half of those become dead, half become wounded. Uh, unfortunately, for fortunately, I should say, for the Army of the West, their heavy, their armored foot, these are the big boys, what most people call heavy foot, they still have 500 of those and 260 light horse, and those light horse who were chased, chased off, remember, they came down here and they, they ran up and saved those heavy foot, and then were immediately chased off the board by the orcish wolves. That's going to be vital, because these light horse, the really wolves, the orcs came in with 480, they lost 100 in the battle, and then the other 380 were so busy chasing the light horse, they're not available to chase down the remnants who fled of, of infantry that fled the field. So we're going to give them the benefit of all, basically 900 of these foot troops will be able to escape. And not only that, but they escaped with 300 orcish armored foot and almost 300 heavy chariots. So the, the specialist heavy troops... For the cleavers are all prisoners. We'll look at those in just a second. For their part, Grochnard was able to capture a 525 heavy foot, that's the humans, and 125, oh, so the 125 heavy foot guards have to come out of his survivors. So here you see the orcs have survived. So they went in with 2,500. They lost about 900 casualties through the course of the tabletop play. So half of those were dead. Half of those are wounded. They will have to retreat to the nearest uh, well, village, I guess you could call it, for two weeks. So on the 20th of July, they will become available. They might not be able to make it there, as you'll see in just a moment. And then again with the armored foot. So th they've got 150 wounded, 150 dead. So this army of the cleavers is now 1,600 and 380. So we need to figure out what's going to happen to them. And again, just to remind you, that's over here on the western side of over here on the western side of the Empire. So they may decide to come down and besiege Hobfort. Now, the prisoners have a, day, a day's head start. And that's where the weather chart comes in. And I don't know if you can read this right now. We have only figured out the weather through the 15th. We need to figure out July 16th and so on, and we'll try to get to that today. But the key thing is it rained on the 5th and the 7th, the day before and the day after. It was rainy. And that's part of the reason why I'm giving the survivors the benefit of the doubt. The... Light horse, or in this case, the wolves, 
are cold, wet, tired, and hungry, and they don't have any real motivation to go charging through the light woods hunting down survivors when there is a warm fire and a hot plate of food waiting for them. Because they are likely to be put into that hot pot and turned into food, the survivors have a little more motivation on the 7th to keep on trucking. So what I did is I, I ran the numbers real quick, and these survivors... Um, because they're moving through the Falcon home wood, they're only moving a half an inch per turn. It's going to be the 16th. They're going to be just outside of Hob Fort on July 15th. That's what we know. And then they're going to put their, advance their prisoners down. And on the 18th, the Heavingford has become the de facto prisoner of war camp for the Romans. The survivors are going to wind up right here. All right. So that's one thing we know. But let's take a look at the prisoners for the Romans. They are going to be frog-marched past Kajdra's Ven. And, you know, I think it's a pretty good bet. It's going to be the 7th, 8th. On the 8th, the wounded and whatnot will be in Kajdra's Ven. So we don't need to worry about those orcish wounded. They're here. The, if they're left alone, the prisoners will be marched to here on July 15th. And remember that the goal for the orcs is to get all the prisoners up here to the giant hill where Murray Mack is waiting. And if they can get 100 prisoners to him... He's going to come stomping down, and he's going to start tearing up the Roman Empire. He's basically a mercenary that they pay off with prisoners that he can eat. Now, that gets a little bit more complicated because the Romans have an army of the center. They have been marching up through these woods, and they are looking to get to here, spend a day. Now we have to think about what's going to happen to the army of the center, but hold on. First of all, let's turn our attention over here to the diversionary attack. On the eastern side of the empire that was ordered by the emperor to take some of the heat off of these guys. Maybe a mistake, but hey, we'll give, we'll give the emperor a break on that one, okay? So we have a fortified manor up here. Second Baron Elizabeth Farm, second fight. And this is a rematch. The survivors of the first fight showed up along with the army of the Nashers. And here is our butcher's bill for those. For the humans... Because they left the field, any casualties suffered in the battle count as deaths. Now, they might not be dead. They might be critically injured. You know, maybe the orcs are treating them reasonably well. I doubt it. But whatever the, whatever the case, they are out of the campaign. So, unfortunately for, fortunately for the Romans, the survivors of this heavy foot down here, they did retreat in fairly good order they retreated off the board they weren't slaughtered to a man so a total of 625 of those and 75 medium horse were able to leave the field now looking over here at the nashers they came in with 1850 and they are leaving with well they actually left with 1400 effective troops but they're gonna dump fi oh, i'm sorry 1300 they're gonna dump 50 of those orc guards to to guard the prisoners that they took they took 125 light horse and 125 archers. The loss of those light horse is very bad because during the course of the battle, the Nashers still have 200 light horse or wolves that are running around the woods hunting down the survivors. So what I did for that is I said, look, they're going to lose about a fifth of their forces. And just to keep things simple, the medium horse lost a third of theirs. So at the end of the day, the, the tattered survivors of 2nd Baron Elizabeth Farm amount to just 550 mounted. And they are staggering their way back down to Blagton, which again, we mentioned earlier, they're going to arrive on the 12th. Good weather, but that's, that's kind of where things stand on the 7th, right? So then we have to take our, turn our attention slightly north. And take a look at what happens to the prisoners the orcs took there. They're on the map to the south. The prisoners on the 12th will be here. And then the, the, they through the grasslands, you can move three quarters of an inch. So the 14th, they arrive at the lesser sun, Sunderland. It should be Sunderland because it sunders the land, you see. Put a little D in there. Let's just fix that on the fly. The Sunderland River. On the 15th, they make it to the north side. All right, so it's a bit of a foot race here to see who gets their prisoners to Murray Mack first. There's only one giant. Whoever gets their prisoners there first, that's the direction Murray Mack is going to go. They're still at least a week away, and I think these guys might have the edge because they've already crossed the river. These guys are going to have to cross at some point. It's going to cost them a full day. Let's put that aside for the moment. Well, we don't need to put that aside. 
Better yet, let's tighten up on this because we have to look at the overall picture and make some decisions. We've got four decision points. We need to know what the Cleavers are going to do now that they have won this fight. We need to know what the Roman Army of the North... I keep calling that center, but I really want to call that Army of the North. We have North, West, and East for the Romans, and then we have the Emperor's own army down here in Broholm. We gotta figure out what the army of the what these guys are gonna do. We gotta figure out what the Khan is gonna do, and we have to figure out what the Emperor is gonna do. These are four independent variables. Ah, you may be thinking, well, wait a minute, what about the Nashers over here? The Nashers have orders to get down on lay siege to Blagton. Just as the Army of the East's job was to distract attention, just hey, get up here and cause a ruckus so the orcs don't come over. Now it's the orcs' turn to repay and maybe get back a little bit of their own. They, it looks like they're going to be losing the belt, so maybe they can get away with some loot. We know that the Nashers are heading south. That's the only thing we know for sure. Well, I shouldn't say that. We know that they are going to head south. The question is, what are they going to do? Are they going to wait for backup, or are they just going to run down to Blagton? Because they may be badly outmatched. Uh, as things stand, they can only move a half an inch per day, and there's your half inch right there, through the woods. So they wait on the 7th to address their wounded. It's raining. Get some rest. That means they're here on the 8th. They break free of the woods on the 9th, and they're going to be able to start the siege on the 10th. Maybe. Because they're operating on some very good intelligence about what the Emperor's own army is going to do, and that decision has to take place on the 7th as well. But before we get to that... Let's take a look at the Cleavers over here. They are victorious, and their only job was they the they started up here in the north. They I think they they mustered here at Brojro, and then they started marching down with orders to repel the invaders. Well, we've repelled the invaders. Now, what do we do? They can turn east to intercept the Broman north. They may need to come up this way. They can turn north to defend Khazraj then. So I guess there's two ways to put it. One is to say they can either go straight for the Army of the North or they can move up and defend Khazraj then. Remember, the Army of the North is going to be cut off. They are out of supply now because the Elves have cut off all of their supplies. They're going to start hemorrhaging troops if they are not careful. The third thing they can do is head south in pursuit of the prisoners. So it's going to be out of one or a two, they will intercept the Roman North on a three or four. They're going to hit Khazraj Ven, meaning that's kind of, this is kind of the the aggressive heading south on a five or six, aggressive heading east on a one or a two, or they may just say, look, we're good, and retreat to Khazraj Ven on a three or a four. And with the result of a one, they're going to turn east to intercept the Bromans. So they are, the cleavers start here, and they're going to be headed this way. Where they meet these guys, hard to say. Then we have to decide, well, wait a minute, what is the North Army going to do? And I've already figured out what these options are. They are making their decision on the 7th independent. Now, first thing to point out is that on the 7th, they have not even left the woods. They don't leave the woods until the 8th. So we know they're going to get to here just on the edge of the woods. Then we have to ask, what are they going to do? And the first question is, hearing about, knowing about these prisoners... Are they going to send troops in pursuit? Let's take a look at the roster real quick for that army and see what their options are. Because remember, their job is just, really their job is just get to here, spend a day or two poking around the tomb, grab the belt, and get a, and then skedaddle back south. Of course, now they're going to have to skedaddle south through this great big honking army. So they may welcome a fight, beat the army now, send them running north, and then you can got it. Then you just can waltz right back through the... Falcon home, and that should be easier. But let's take a look here real quick. The Army of the North, Sir Du. Now we have a hero for the first time. They've got 1,800 heavy foot, 160 light horse, and 400 heavy horse. All right, that ain't bad. And they are facing the Cleavers, who as of... So I have a separate, separate sheet that I use to track the stats, if you will. And here's what's funny. This is a lot, you know, this is a lot like a skirmish game. The only difference is instead of having hit points and, and rolling for strength, intelligence, wisdom, what we have for stats are heavy foot, armored foot, light horse. The, he's got 1,600 effectives 
And then he's got a total of 350 light horse. That's what the cleavers have available. At least until the 20th, which isn't going to do them any good. So really, you know, you're looking at 1,800 heavy foot. The cleavers with 1,600, that's a bit of a wash. The hero is a big change. And then the light horse, they're outnumbered two to one. But the 400 heavy horse is big. Those guys are heavy hitters. This may be a mistake. Unless Sir Dude decides to ride to save those prisoners. He may be able to get up here, cut off these prisoners. And how many prisoners did we say that was? The they're, they're written down with the cleavers. That's another 500 troops. If you can get up there, rescue those prisoners, you may be able to add another 500 troops to your boys. Now, they're going to have to skirt around Egok. They're going to have to come around this way to intercept. Unless, as I said, remember that Sir Dude, he may send his light horse up to save those prisoners. Those prisoners are being guarded by, uh, what did we say, 50 heavy foot. Where are you guys? Um, yeah, I think it's 50 to 75 foot. So we may have a small skirmish if we send those light horse up to rescue them. Ah, now the other issue is they might, Sir Dude might decide to just write them off. He might say, no, my job is to get the belt. They knew what they were getting into when they were ordered up here. So he may just decide to take, I don't know, 200 foot troops, head up here, loot the, the dungeon, and then circle wide around and see if they can get back leaving the rest of the army to deal with the cleavers. That's a second option that he has. Um, and then we have to decide, so I guess those are the three. Does he try to save the prisoners? Does he dispatch raiders to the tomb? And does he turn west toward the cleavers? Uh, so that'll be so. And we're just going to do a 50 50 on each of these. Is he going to try to save the prisoners? On a one, two, three, he does. He does. So we are going to break off troops to save the prisoners. Make a little note. And then we have to decide is he going to dispatch raiders to the tomb? On a one, two, three, he does. And he does not. Okay, so we're we're punting on the tomb for now. And then we have to decide, does the main body of the four army... So this is, on a 1-2-3, the army is going to march over to meet the cleavers head on. On a 4-5-6, they're going to continue with their mission. He's not sending off a few raiders. He's taking the entire army. So on a 4, the bulk of the army is going to continue to the tomb. Sir Dude grabs 160 light horse. Wheels, so they're here on the 8th is the rest day, 9, 10, 11. He has to take the light horse. They're the only ones fast enough to make this intercept. Horses move three quarters of an inch. Infantry move half an inch. That means that the guards are moving slower and they've only reached right here. And that is where on the 11th we are going to have a little bitty fight between 160... It was 160 light horse versus 125 foot. And if they can, they are going to rescue 500 prisoners. Interestingly enough, now here's where it gets interesting. The cleavers on their direct intercept are going to meet the Army of the North right here at Watchtower Hill. Let me write that down here, Watchtower Hill. The With a slight hedge... Again, only moving a quarter, uh, half an inch per day. These guys rest on the 9th. This is about the 10th, the 11th, and then, I'm sorry, about, about on the 12th. That's when they get there. Same thing here. They rest on the 8th. The 7th is their, their day off. 8 gets them here. 9, 10, and 11. So they are going to meet on the 11th. We're going to have to do a battle here, the Battle of Watchtower Hill, for all the marbles. But we're not done figuring out what's going to happen in the campaign yet. Because remember, we still have two other armies that we have to think about. There is nobody that can reach these prisoners. They're going to be the ones that are grabbing Murray Mac. we got to figure out how the Great Khan is going to react to all of this activity. Now remember, all the Great Khan knows on the 8th, when he makes his decision, he's going to sally forth on the 9th. These guys have appeared. They disappeared into the woods. Oh, here they are. Okay, great. We won a battle here. We won a battle here. So on the, on the 8th, he has to decide what he's going to do. Independently, the Emperor will decide his. But let's look at the Khan's options. 
he can strike for the Army of the North and defend this area. He's got roughly an even match. These two armies are both, I think the Cleavers have about 1,600 effective, whereas the Army of the North is, we'll just look it up, 1,800. So a slight edge to the Army of the North, and then it's about 400 horse to 400 horse, with the difference being the Bromans have heavy horse now, and the orcs have a combination of light and medium horse. The Great Khan may decide this is the bigger threat and head this way. He may decide, well, you know what? I don't care about some stupid golden belt. That doesn't matter. I have an opportunity to score some big loot, so I'm going to go ahead and start marching down here to the east where my boy, the leader of the Nashers, who's the leader of the Nashers? Which one of you guys is doing great? Oh, that's, that's Merseverks, Warlord Merseverks is tearing things up. Three options. Go for the Army of the North. Ah, he has a third option. So this is on a one or a two. On a five or a six, he's going to start heading this way. But on a three or a four, he's going to wait a day. Remember, we got a little bit of a game of chicken here between these two armies. So on the eighth, Khan has to decide what to do. His boys wake him up. What's the decision? He says, I'm going to wait. Ask me again tomorrow. Okay. Now, on the 9th, he says, uh, I don't know, ask me again tomorrow. Well, wait a minute. He might have to respond to this guy now. So, on the 9th, he says, ask me on the 10th. Well, let's take a look at the Emperor. Okay, we're down here in Broholm now. And he's got the same thing. He's got 500 broken troops headed to Blagden on the 8th. He receives word that the Nashers, a large force led by the victorious warlord Merseverks, is headed his way with 1,300, well, a total of almost 2,000 troops. There's a very good chance he's going to rush over here to try to save Blagton. On a 1, 2, 3, that's going to be his choice. On a 4, he's going to wait a day, because he's watching Great Khan. He doesn't want to be stuck over here if the Great Khan is headed this way. On a 5, he's just going to wait for Khan to decide and follow him, and on a six, he is immediately going to head west. Blagton must stand. Oh, no, not Blagton. Uh, Hob Fort must stand, okay? So there you go. One, two, three. Uh, four is wait a day. Five is just wait for the con. And six is head this way. So on a four, he's going to wait a day. And we already know the con is going to wait a day. Okay. Uh, so now we're... I'm sorry, this is the second roll. Four, once again, he waits a day. So both of these armies are sitting here waiting. On the 8th, they sit tight. On the 9th, they sit tight. And, you know, instead, why don't I go ahead and roll both of these at the same time? All right? With the green die being the orcs, the yellow being the bromans. And this time, the bromans say, we got to head east now. So finally, the 8th and 9th, on the 10th, they set out. Likewise, the great Khan, on that day, decides to go for the army of the north. So they both blinked. But they both took way too long to do it. On the 10th, now we need to do a little bit of measuring. And the Great Khan, we need to look at the armies, right? Because you move at the speed of your slowest. The Great Khan's army is 2,000 heavy foot and uh, 600 armored foot and 1,000 heavy horse. They're going to only move at... They're moving off-road. They're only going to move a half an inch. We're going to be smart about that. On the 10th, they're going to wind up at the river. They spend the 11th crossing it, and then they've got three more days. They can march an inch and a half. They are going to be, so that's on the 10th, on the 11th, on the 12th. Thir well, we're gonna, we got to wait right there, don't we? Because the next decision point will be... Seeing what happens at these two battles over here. What happens at the Watchtower Hill. So we're actually only going to advance the clock to the 12th, at least in this theater of the battle. We also have to look at what's going to happen to the Emperor's Own. Now bear in mind, the Emperor's Own is marching on good roads, so they can move a total of three quarters of an inch per day. So on the 10th, they will move from here, bro home, to here, the end of the 10th across the bridge on the 11th and on the 12th, they will be right here, just outside of Blagden. So there is the Emperor's Own. 
And likewise, what's going on with the Nashers? They spend the 7th recuperating, the 8th, 9th. So on the 10th, wait a minute. Let's look at this. Oh, I think they arrive on the 12th. Does that make sense? They only move a half an inch. Oh, I, is that right? Moving through Lightwood's infantry. Oh, they only move a quarter inch per turn. That's what the problem is. Oh, that's a problem. I thought they moved to the half. Okay. So if they're only moving a quarter inch per turn on the 8th, on the 7th they wait, 8, 9, 10. That means they're going to get here on the 11th. So the orcs can arrive. Orcs will arrive on the 11th. And the earliest the emperor can get there because he took so long sitting around, 10, 11, on the 11th and the 12th, he's going to be there. All right, but we got to turn we got to turn our attention back up here because I, I messed something up. How close is Ranger March? Oh, Ranger March is only but that battle is only a quarter of an inch away anyway. So e even if that first day is spent just getting out of the woods, there's still going to be a situation where uh, they spend the eighth, ninth, tenth, and then likewise these guys are going to spend the uh, eighth, ninth, tenth. Yeah, so we're still going to do the eleventh. So really down here, we've advanced just one extra day. That's on the 12th. And then forget that arrival on the 12th. There we go. Okay. That was a note for myself just to see what I thought was going to happen. But after looking at this on camera, we've got another situation where after a brief respite from the action, there's a whole lot going on all at the same time. We've got a rescue to do on the 11th. We've got a major battle here to do on the 11th. We've got, well, we need to take a look at this because on the 11th, these guys are going to lay in for a siege. And I really think instead what we're looking at here is on the 13th, we may wind up having to fight a battle. There's a nice, interesting little sub game for how to handle sieges in Sylvester's Solo Wargaming Guide, and it, it, it basically walks you through the process. It's great. You use cards to figure out whether the besieging army has enough troops or not, but that or has enough troops if they have enough supplies, uh, how long the siege takes. So if you have an army racing to help out. Oh, the other thing I should point out, we're going to go ahead and dump the survivors, the tattered remnants of the Army of the East. We're going to put them over here in... Uh, we, we have two options. They can either, well, they, let's do this. As always, we have three options. Oh, they're going to be in Blagden. They're not going to have any factor in this for right now. Because they are only a day ahead. They can link up with the Emperor's own. I guess that's probably the best way to do it. As they come out of the woods, they can either try to link up with this army. They can, which would bolster their numbers. Or they can head into Blagden to try, try to help defend against a potential siege. Or they can head over to Pineland to defend them. And I should assign some values to this. Um, is it, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we roll a 3. So yeah, it's pretty much what I expected. They head into Blagden. And let's fix that white balance. I don't know why it keeps... It doesn't like my hands in there, does it? And that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, rescue. Battle. And then, oh, by the way, if the Bromans win this battle, they're going to have to spend a day looting the tomb. And then on the 13th, well, no, it's the battle is going to be the 11th. The 12th will be recover. The 13th will be looting. And then on the 14th, they're going to have to ride away, which means the Khan, on the 13th, he's not going to be able to make it in time. He's going to be still a full day behind those raiders as they bust loose. However, depending on how things may go over here, he may have to reverse course. And this is where Hydra Isle comes into play. You know, I put a Hydra here, you got to fight your way through. The Khan may come around this way and he may decide to just fight his way through the Hydra. Rather than have to come all the way north and down, he can come at these woods from much lower. It's a decision for another day. For today, big thing is we got to do the prisoner rescue. I think we're going to do that one first. The fun part would have been if this was a day or two before this battle, the prisoners could have marched down and actually, you know, that may be one thing to do is send these prisoners over here to delay the Khan so the bulk of the army can get out. Huh? That may be how we move these pieces of the puzzle.
there's a whole drama here, man. There's a whole story. There's all kinds of branching, forking paths that the story can take. But it won't take it until we play out one, two, well, at least these two battles, right? And then I think we may be justified in doing a third battle over here. But let's let's talk about that later, okay? We've been at this for almost a half an hour. I appreciate you coming along with me. Till next time, I'm praying for you.